Hey guys, Urban Combat Survivor here. Uh, this is uh, kind of half a video response and kind of half a, a prompt to think about some things. One of my subscribers, the Vermont Hillbilly, I'll, I'll put a link to his uh, to his channel down there. He did a great video. It's uh, it's titled Wood Rain. Um, apparently he does uh, firewood for a living, so uh, the man knows what he's talking about. And uh, he's one of those guys who's kind of understated. He uh, he doesn't talk about anything he, he uh, doesn't solidly know about. So if you watch any of his videos, man, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, if you haven't thought about heating your home, and even if you live in a, in a hot climate somewhere down south, uh, you're still going to have to cook. You're still going to need firewood. You're still going to need to boil water and sterilize things and... Uh, you know, get rid of waste that can't go in a compost bin and that kind of thing. So, no matter no matter where you live, you're going to need firewood. The uh, the video he does, he uh, he gives you a little visual on not only the work it takes, but the space you're going to need for firewood, uh, for enough to actually get by on. Uh, uh, you know, I, I have uh, I have a little bit of experience and nowhere near his level of expertise with it. When I was a kid. We used to go to uh, upstate New York to my great grandmother's place. Uh, I was about nine, I guess, depending on which summer I went up. Um, my uh, my sister is about two years older than me. My my younger brother used to go up, and uh, all she had was wood stoves. She had the uh, kitchen stove and the stove in the living room, and uh, we used to cut enough wood over the course of the summer to last her through the winter. She had a tiny, tiny little place. Um, it wouldn't even be considered a rancher now. And the amount of wood that we had to put up to make sure she she went through the winter okay, um, you know, it's eye opening. So it, you know, I, I've seen he talks about some of the videos that he's seen where guys have a you know a little tiny stack of wood. Um, you can't even measure it in cords. It's like a wheelbarrow full and uh, maybe two wheelbarrows, you know. But that, that's nowhere near enough. So if you haven't thought about how much space you're going to need to put wood up, firewood that is. Um, and you're also going to have to realize this, wood needs to season. You, you can burn it green, but you don't want to do that. It's, uh, it's going to clog up your chimney and it's, uh, it can cause chimney fires and all kinds of other crap. You don't, you don't want to do that. You need to dry it for at least nine months. So, uh, so if you haven't thought about how much space you're going to need, not only for the wood that you're burning, but the wood that you're drying, uh, you know, go check this guy's video out. He's, uh, uh, you know, he's a pro at what he's doing. Uh, he talks about it. He gives you a good idea of how much work it's going to take. And, uh, I think it's worth checking out. So, uh, you know, I just thought I'd mention that. I know, uh, uh, we've had some, you know, I've gone back a little bit in comments with Shall Not Be Infringed. He, uh, he has a wood stove. Um, those of us in the city, we, we have to... You have to really consider this more, I think, than guys that live further out and have more land because um, it's going to come down to space management for us. Uh, there's a lot of things to consider. If you don't have the tools necessary, he mentions in his video, um, Vermont Hillbilly mentions in his video, if you don't have a, uh, a tree felling axe, if you don't have a crosscut saw, uh, how are you going to drop them trees to get the firewood? Um, I don't have those tools. He prompted me on it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look into grabbing them. Um, you know, uh, my great grandmother she had a a splitter, a log splitter. One of the guys down the road would bring up his uh, his splitter, and then uh, you know split things down to manageable chunks, and they'd cut them with chainsaws, and then we'd just do the splitting with axes. So, you know, that was that was plenty enough work as it was. Now you're gonna have to do everything manually, so it's it's something to think about. A couple other things to think about where that's concerned is there's a there's about a million critters that love to live in firewood piles, so uh, vermin are definitely going to be a problem, and it's uh it's something you need to consider when you're uh, talking about stacking wood, man. Um, you can't stack it in your house uh, unless you're going to have a cat or two, uh, and uh, you don't want to even stack it right up against the side of your house because uh, moisture and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of shit to consider with it so make sure you've uh, realistically put space aside for any wood that you're planning on getting and uh, 
maybe think about your plan on how you're going to keep replenishing that stack of wood because like wood lots and stuff like that people like me living in a city um, it's going to get tough because uh, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to be out there chopping down any tree they can get and burning that shit green because they didn't make a plan so uh, you know if, if you're making provision for any kind of wood burning or coal burning you need to think about where you're going to put that how you're going to stack it how you're going to replenish it and uh, how you're going to keep vermin from living in those piles and those stacks so uh, check out the guy's video like I said I'll link it below and uh, and think on it think about space management think about uh, you know you can't put it in the mud because you know uh, and there's a million different things you can google about it but um, I hope you're thinking about it realistically and if you're not I hope this is a reality check that helps you out Urban Combat Survivor signing